Hey there guys, Zach here from Inbeta and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 build 14.3.1.6. This build includes a number of features and enhancements over the last public preview build which was 14.2.9.5. So diving straight in the first noteworthy changes are with Cortana rather frequently now every build seems to have a new feature with Cortana but these ones are actually really cool these features now sp uh, well it's the big foundation work of for syncing notifications between phone and desktop so this does work between uh, insider phones uh, so the Windows phone insider builds uh, between this build on desktop and in fact Android devices running co the Cortana app version 1.5 or higher so if we jump into Cortana here you'll see that there's actually a couple new changes we've also got a new settings option on the side here in the hamburger menu instead of it being in the notebook and there's also a permissions button which doesn't actually work so that's nice to know we see here there's new, a new language option so you can now change the language of cortana so you can get different features so if you use english united states you will get the most features because obviously microsoft being an american-based company focus cortana's features in america so you can get like tracking in phone all that stuff if you use cortana english united states united kingdom gets slightly less but of course you get different features tailored to your location so keep that in mind if we scroll down to the bottom here, there's a new sync notifications with mobile device option. Now, when this is on, when you have a mobile device hooked up with the same Microsoft account, running all the correct builds and versions and stuff, you will be able to sync notifications. Now, right now, only a few uh, syncing things work. Microsoft has detailed this on the blog. Low battery notifications, so when your phone battery is low, Cortana will let you know on the PC as well as on the phone. You've also got to find my phone option, so when you ask Cortana, to find my phone, she does it now. Oh, okay, of course. Set up mic. Next, next, really? I don't wanna do this, I just want to uh, do this. Find my phone. Sure, I'll try and find your phone and I'll let you know if I do. It could take a couple of minutes. So now Cortana is searching for my phone and when she finds my phone, I don't believe it's going to work though. Although this is the same account on this phone here. Oh, well, we'll see. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure if it's going to work. But if she does, Cortana will let me know in a notification that she's found my phone. Oh, my phone has done something. So Cortana is looking for this phone. Oh, she found my phone and she's also shown you where I live. So <laughs> I can now I can just say yes, I got it or I can ring it. So press ring. Did that work? I pressed ring. And my phone is not doing anything, so... Well, I guess that kind of half works, half doesn't work. Regardless, it's it's a feature that works and it's coming in the anniversary update. Very nice indeed. Share map directions across devices, so... My, oh, there it is, now it's uh, ringing. Very nice. If I just tap that, does that go away? Yes, okay, so it's gone now. Thanks Cortana, I now found my phone, very nice. If we move right along, share map directions across devices, so what does this do? Today we're breaking down one of those barriers by enabling you to access navigation details across devices through Cortana. Tell Cortana directions to place on your PC and she'll send the same directions to your phone. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to demo that because it's probably going to show you where I live again and I don't want to do that. So that's a feature that works so you can try that out yourself. Making Cortana easier to set up on your device. If you're, uh, So yeah, that was the whole languages thing I just showed you. And that's pretty much it for Cortana. Now, jumping, moving on to something else. There's a new app pre-installed on this system, on in this build. The Skype Universal Windows Preview Preview. Uh, so yes... Windows Preview, I mean Platform Preview, of course I meant Platform Preview. It's a very basic, very early app, so it's very buggy. The, the UI is just disgusting, really. If we go into settings here, you can see a number of options. We've got instant messages, incoming calls, syncs, my Skype contacts with the People app, etc., etc. Uh, so yes, this is a conversation that I was having with Sean. I was testing some things. There's a What's New button here that takes you to the Skype website and a weird ability to make it full screen. So there you go, that sort of thing. Just like on Windows 8. Remember Windows 8? No, me neither. So let's close that out and let's move on to Action Center. The Action Center has some improvements. As you can see, no, go away. Let's go to there. 
the action center has been slightly updated ui wise uh if you haven't seen build uh microsoft is working on an entire new cloud-based action center that which pretty much means syncing notifications between devices uh you know universal dismiss all that good stuff that's coming at some point in the future right now though there's kind of the early groundworks for it so that's why some of the elements in the action center look a little bit misplaced or like you know a little bit wonky like here there's a big gap up here for no real reason uh that will be fixed likely before rtm um if we jump into settings because there are some new options for the um notification center you see cortana here we now got options to set priorities so a top priority will put no matter We'll, we'll put these notifications on top of the action center no matter what is sent first or second. So say you receive a text message at 2.30 p.m. and then you receive... Um, oh, sorry, yeah, you receive a text message at 2.30 p.m. but before that you receive the Cortana notification at 2.20 p.m. The Cortana notification will still remain at the top of the action center so you never miss it. Put priority high just kind of puts it below the top priorities but above normal obviously and then normal is just your notifications listed in chronological order pretty self-explanatory if we move on to the next thing updated emojis which is a thing so now the teens can send emojis in updated fashion yes they're all new they're all groovy and stuff the teens requested this one i believe but yes new emojis for everybody very very exciting personalization improvements so I haven't activated this virtual machine, sadly, so I can't actually jump into this, but I can show you the UI. And actually, I will be able to change it just manually, so I'll have to do it via the registry. But yes, look down here. Choose your mode, light or dark. There's now a dark mode, and it's pretty much the same as what happens on Windows Phone, except it doesn't affect the taskbar, start menu, or action center, which is kind of where we all wanted it to, you know, affect. It doesn't. So this is light mode, and the, these three elements are still pretty dark. Uh, but changing to dark mode, which I can do via the registry editor, uh oops this one's let's change it to zero so just imagine i press that button there now everything's dark and it's pretty fantastic so if we close that and reopen it you'll see the no, the task for title bar is now dark in this app if we open up other apps such as um calculator calculator app is also dark groove music will probably be dark no <laughs> of course not some of the apps apparently need to be updated to actually hook into this functionality. But yes, the messaging app, the messaging app is something we should definitely talk about. So the messaging app is dark because I'm using dark mode. But if we jump into settings here, there are some new options and messaging everywhere beta. Now, this isn't working yet. It will be working at some point in the near future. But what this essentially does is enables SMS texting across phone and PC. So. When this is working, I'll be able to send an SMS text straight from this app and receive text and just do awesome things. So send a, send a text from here and sync texting history across all your Windows devices. Very awesome. I am looking forward to this greatly. Right now, though, it doesn't seem to work. Microsoft says it's coming at some point in the future. Uh, there is a new PC access experience. Now, this is for Miracast devices uh, as well as Continuum devices. So if you're using a 950 or 950XL or any Lumia or Windows phone with Continuum support and don't have a dock, you can use this app to stream Continuum to your PC. But yes, if your device does support Miracast, you'll be able to wirelessly stream Continuum to your PC, which is very nice. Now, another thing, virtual desktop improvements. You can now pin apps to a desktop. So if we can take the File Explorer here. I can now show this window on all desktops now whenever i switch to a new desktop that app shows up there as well oh, i just closed it great job zach let's reopen all right let's just let's just do open so there you go you can see i've got two different apps open on two different virtual desktops if i show this window on all desktops it now shows up on this desktop as well very very nice indeed now another change is that context menus and the start menu are different slightly they look the same but they're just slightly different and they're very slow no idea why the start menu is set to get updated uh, very soon in the next few builds i imagine uh with a new hamburger menu and some other um experience changes but apart from that uh, that's pretty much it for this build i believe 
Yes, there are some battery saver stuff, but since this is a desktop, I don't actually get access to that, so I can't show it to you. Oh, there's some, some Windows Update improvements. If we jump into Windows Update here, you'll see that there are now active hours, so you can now specify when you're using your PC, so Windows knows not to automatically restart, and will just restart during your unactive hours. So, say, as for example, here it's set 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. as my active hours, so anywhere between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m., uh, a.m., sorry, it will... Um, install updates and do other things and restart and all that good stuff so it won't affect your work which is very nice and the last major feature in this build is with the feedback card and that's not the right that's not the right start menu feedback oh the start menu has completely crashed yay right it's uh can i not open it with the command of course i can't feedback yes so I think I've left comments already, but yes, you can now comment on feedback in the feedback hub. So if we go in here, you'll see, there's my comment. I said that 13 minutes ago. Yes, fixed in 14316. Very, very nice. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.